In NASCAR's 75 year history, there have been many drivers come and go. Of the thousands of drivers to compete at NASCAR's highest level, only 204 of them have ever visited Victory Lane. Of those 204 winners, 198 of them were born in the United States. I was bored and curious about which states have produced the most winners, champions, and Hall of Famers. So I decided to research just that. And let me tell you, it was a lot of research. But I did it, and now I want to share my findings with you. Hi, my name is Matt, and this is a special Dogleg Media production. In this video, we look at each state in the union and discuss how many wins, winners, champions, and Hall of Famers they have produced at the Cup Series level. This video will pair nicely with the Every International Winner Ever video that I did previously. If you haven't seen that one, it is linked below. Be sure to check it out after this one. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay in the loop of future videos. I post history related content every single week, so join the community and hopefully you learn something new. But with that intro out of the way, let's dive in to the United States of NASCAR. So before we get into this, here's a quick disclaimer. These numbers are based on the driver's state of birth. I've seen the comments from the thumbnail teaser. Yes, drivers like Denny Hamlin are known for being from Virginia, but he was born in Florida. For the purposes of this video, his accomplishments will be counted for Florida. The same applies to the Allison family. Although they were known for being members of the legendary Alabama gang, they were not born in Alabama, so their numbers will be counted for the state that they were born in. I just wanted to clear that up before we proceed, because yes, there are those special situations, and I just wanted a way to uniform it all. Also, I am just focusing on winners. I would love y'all to tell me some drivers from these states that haven't won yet that you think can add to their totals. Drop those down below. All right, with that out of the way, now let's get this party started. Before we get to the winners, let's get the winless states out of the way. There are 15 states that have never produced a winner in the Cup Series. Since we have a lot to get to in this one, this will be brief. The 15 winless states are Alaska, which to be fair, wasn't even a state for the first 10 years of the sport, Delaware, Hawaii, which also had a 10 year penalty, Idaho, Louisiana, which surprises me honestly, Minnesota, which is also surprising, New Hampshire, the only state to have an active NASCAR track without a winner, New Mexico, North and South Dakota, Rhode Island, Utah, Vermont, and finally Wyoming. And to make matters worse, there isn't a single full-time driver in the Cup Series from any of these 15 states. And yeah, I was curious enough to see if any of the Xfinity drivers were from any of them. Maybe they could move up and get one of these states off the list. Nope, there's not a full-time Xfinity driver from any of these states either. It looks like we will have to wait a while or hope for a miracle to get one of these states to victory lane. With the winless out of the way, let's jump into the winning states of the Cup Series. We go in alphabetical order, so we start with Alabama. Alabama is ranked 10th of the 35 winning states in terms of wins with 82. They have produced five different winners in their time. The state has produced two championships with one driver, with that one driver being the state's only Hall of Famer. Alabama is led by Tim Flock. The Fort Payne native won 39 times in the Cup Series. He is also the state's only champion, winning two titles in 1952 and 1955. Coincidentally, he is the state's only Hall of Famer as well. And I can't talk about the state of Alabama without talking about the fabled Alabama gang. Ironically, only one of this prestigious group was born in Alabama, being Hueytown's own Neil Bonnet. Bonnet would win 18 times and was just one of the legendary Alabama gang. The Allison family previously mentioned was a major part of the group, with Bobby, Donnie, and Davey tearing up the competition with all three being Hall of Famers. However, the Allison's accomplishments belong to another state still to be discussed, but I had to mention Hueytown's Alabama gang for this part. The most recent winner for the state was Bubba Wallace. The Mobile native has won twice at the cup level. His first win would actually come at his home state track of Talladega. How many more wins do you think Bubba can add to the state's win total? And now we move to the Grand Canyon state, Arizona. It has nine total wins in the Cup Series, and it is one of the newest states to join the ranks of winners. Arizona has produced two winners, but no champions or current Hall of Famers. The state is led in wins by its first winner, Alex Bowman of Tucson, with seven wins. He would make the state a winner with his first career win at Chicagoland in 2019. 
The most recent winner for the state is the Phoenix native, Michael McDowell. He has two wins, with the most recent for the state coming at the Indy Road Course in 2023. He is also the only Daytona 500 winner for the state, winning the 2021 running. With Bowman having championship caliber equipment, do you think he could get the state its first championship? Let me know down below. On to the natural state, we have Arkansas. It has 44 total wins with two different drivers. It doesn't have a championship, but it does have one Hall of Famer. Arkansas is led in wins by their Hall of Famer Mark Martin. The Batesville native collected 40 wins in his Hall of Fame career. One of the greatest drivers to never win a championship, Martin was a fan favorite. He is also the most recent winner for the state, with his win at New Hampshire in 2009 being the last for the state. The first to win for Arkansas would be its other winner, Texarkana's own Parnelli Jones. Parnelli would make the state a winner in 1957 at Bremerton, and he would ultimately win four times at the cup level. And we've hit a pretty big one here. It's California. The Golden State has 317 total wins with 23 different drivers. It is home to 13 championships, won by four drivers, and it has two Hall of Famers. Cali is led in wins by a Rushmore driver, Jeff Gordon. The Vallejo, California native won 93 times, good enough for third all-time in the sport. He is also a four-time champion and one of two Hall of Famers from the state. They are led in championships, however, by El Cajon's Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy is one of only three seven-time champions in the Cup Series history. He also has 83 wins to his name, good for second in the state and sixth all-time. The other champions to hell from the state are Bakersfield's Kevin Harvick winning the title in 2014 and Elk Grove's Kyle Larson winning his title in 2021. With Harvick's retirement in 2023, the state currently has three active winners in the Cup Series. The previously mentioned Kyle Larson, as well as Tyler Reddick and AJ Allmendinger. With as much success as the state has had, it is wild that they only have two Hall of Famers. However, we can assume that Harvick and Larson will be added to that list, but it makes you think. Most of the state's heaviest hitters have hit the scene relatively recently. With an abundance of California-born drivers in the sport, who is next to add their name to the winner's list? And this next one is going to be quick, and honestly that's a good thing because we have a lot to get to. Up next is the Centennial State, Colorado. It barely escaped the clinches of winless, having one win, obviously meaning there was only ever one winner. This lone winner wouldn't win a title and wasn't a Hall of Famer. The pride and joy of Colorado is Fort Collins' own John Rostick. He would only ever enter six Cup Series races, but that was enough for him to grab the win at the Arizona State Fairgrounds in 1960. And now we move to the Nutmeg State, Connecticut. Actually, I saw like four different nicknames for this state. Any of y'all from Connecticut, let me know what the actual state nickname is. It has 33 total wins with two different drivers. It has two championships thanks to one driver and doesn't currently have any Hall of Famers. The majority of the state's success is credited to Middletown's own Joey Logano. The two-time champion has won 32 times and counting at the time of this recording in late 2023. While the state doesn't currently have a Hall of Famer, you can take it to the bank that Logano will be inducted into that elite class in the future. While the majority of the state's success came from Logano, it would be Dan Barry's Jerry Nadeau who would make the state a winner. His Lone Cup Series win at Atlanta in 2000 would be the state's first. There are a couple of Connecticut drivers active in the sport. The previously mentioned Logano and Ryan Priest. Do you think that Priest can become the third different winner from the Nutmeg State? And here's another pretty big one. It's the Sunshine State, Florida. The state where NASCAR is headquartered has 233 wins split between 12 drivers. It has one championship and four Hall of Famers. Led in wins by Miami's Bobby Allison, the leader of the Alabama gang would win 84 times, good for fifth all-time in the sport. He is also the state's only champion, winning the 1983 championship. Three of the state's Hall of Famers are all from the same family, the Allisons. The previously mentioned Bobby, his brother Donnie, and his son Davey. This family is responsible for 113 of the state's 233 wins, one of the greatest families in the sport's history. The other Hall of Famer from the state is Fireball Roberts. Fireball is an incredible name, and he would add 33 wins to the state's total. And all right, here's where things get confusing. Denny Hamlin, born in Tampa, is second all time for the state in wins with 51. I know, everything you see says Denny Hamlin is from Virginia. 
and for the majority of his life growing up, he was. However, like we discussed before, we are going by their state of birth, so Denny's accomplishments count for the Sunshine State. While he doesn't have a championship currently, he is one of the elite drivers in the Cup Series today. He is joined by Ross Chastain as current winners from the state. The state is in good hands. Look for the state to add to their win total with Hamlin and Chastain, and both of those guys have the talent to also bring the state a championship. And now on to the Peach State, Georgia. It has 72 total wins between eight different drivers. It has two championships, won by two different drivers, and it currently has one Hall of Famer. A couple of NASCAR's most popular drivers hail from Georgia, Dawsonville specifically. A father-son duo. It's the Elliots, Bill and Chase. Bill is the state's winningest driver with 44 total wins, and his son Chase is second with 18 wins and counting. They are also the two champions from the state, and Bill is the Peach State's only Hall of Famer currently. Who do you think can add their name to the list of winners from Georgia? And do you think that Chase will grab a second championship and or pass his father in wins? And we have made it to the Prairie State, Illinois. It has 57 total wins from five different drivers. It has never won a championship, but it does have one Hall of Famer. Elmhurst's Fred Lorenzen leads all drivers in the state with 26 total wins. His largest wins would come in 1965, winning both the Daytona 500 and World 600 that season. Lorenzen is also the only Hall of Famer from the state, but came up just shy of a championship with a best points finish of third. Another notable driver from Illinois was Metropolis native Jack Smith. He would win 21 times in his career and would even win the most popular driver award in 1959. He actually tied with Junior Johnson in the initial voting, but he would come out on top after a second ballot. Illinois doesn't have representation in the Cup Series currently, so it may be a while before it sees Victory Lane again. After all, the state's last trip to Victory Lane was way back in 1967 by Lorenzen. And we go to my neighbors to the north, the Hoosier State, Indiana. They have a total of 83 wins between nine different drivers. The state has won three championships, all by one driver, and that same driver is the state's only Hall of Famer. And I think we all know who the top dog of the Hoosier State is. Rushville, Indiana's pride and joy, Tony Stewart. Smoke was not only a decorated NASCAR driver, he also won an IndyCar championship as well. Winning 49 of the state's 83 wins, he is also responsible for all three of Indiana's championships. He would be inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame in 2020, being the state's only Hall of Famer as well. Stewart also employed a couple of Indiana-born winners, with Ryan Newman winning 18 times for the state and current driver Chase Briscoe with his lone win at Phoenix in 2022. This win by Briscoe is the most recent for the state. Justin Haley is another active Indiana-born winner in the sport, with his lone win coming at Daytona in 2019. The Hoosier State has found some great success in the Cup Series. I wonder how my home state will do in this rivalry. We will find out soon. On to the state with the newest track to the Cup Series circuit, Iowa. The Hawkeye State has 21 wins between three different drivers. They haven't won a championship yet, and they don't have a Hall of Famer currently. Dick Hutcherson leads all drivers with 14 wins, accounting for two-thirds of the state's total wins. He would also come oh so close to a championship, finishing second in the 1965 points. The state's first win would come courtesy of Harlan, Iowa's Johnny Beauchamp. The almost winner of the inaugural Daytona 500 would win twice in his career, with the state's first coming at Lakewood in 1959. Iowa's most recent win wasn't recent at all, with Tiny Lund's fifth and final career win being the last for the state in 1971 at North Wilkesboro. I am excited to see Iowa Speedway on the Cup Series schedule. Let me know some current drivers from Iowa who can break their long winless drought. Kansas, the Sunflower State, is up next. It has 12 total wins between three different drivers. However, it doesn't have a championship or a Hall of Famer. The state is led by Emporia native Clint Boyer with 10 wins. Boyer would come close to a championship, finishing second to Brad Keselowski in 2012. A driver turned TV personality on Fox, Clint was always a great personality on and off the track and has shown a lot of pride for his home state. The other two winners from the Sunflower State have some pretty cool history. To start, Kansas was a winner before any other state in NASCAR, with Halstead's Jim Roper winning the first ever Cup Series race. 
and then Coffeyville, Kansas is represented by Johnny Rutherford. Before SVG's shocking win at Chicago in 2023, Rutherford was the last driver to win in their first ever Cup Series start, winning at Daytona in 1963 driving for Smokey Eunuch. For a state with only three winners, they've had some historic wins, which is pretty awesome. Ah, my old Kentucky home. We've hit the bluegrass and my home state. Kentucky has 98 total wins with five different drivers. We have three championships, all earned by one man, and that legend is also the state's only Hall of Famer. Yeah, that legend is responsible for 84 of the state's wins. It's Owensboro native Darrell Waltrip. He is tied fourth all-time in wins and also won the state its three championships with titles in 1981, 82, and 85. He would become the state's only Hall of Famer in 2012. His brother Michael, also from Owensboro, would be a two-time Daytona 500 winner for the state and would win the most tragic event in NASCAR history. All in all, Mikey would win five times. Another Owensboro native to win, not related to the Waltrips, would be Jeremy Mayfield. He is the last driver to win for the state, with his win in 2005 at Michigan. The only active driver among NASCAR's top three series from Kentucky is Truck Series champion Ben Rhodes. It looks like he will be a Truck Series lifer, so probably no hope for a cup win there, but I can dream. Alright, here's another quick one much like Colorado, it's Maine. The Pine Tree State has two wins by one driver. They don't have a Hall of Famer or a champion. Their one and only though would win the closest finish in NASCAR history at Darlington in 2003. It's Newberg's Ricky Craven. He would get the state's first win in 2001 at Martinsville, with the state's last being that legendary finish at Darlington. And staying in the Northeast, we move to Massachusetts. The Bay State has 10 total wins with three different drivers. No champions or Hall of Famers to speak of, so let's take a look at who led the state in wins. It was a close race, but Ralph Moody of Dighton, Mass won five times in his career, barely edging out Pete Hamilton with four wins. The last winner from the state would be Fitchburg's Ron Bouchard. Ron has a wild story behind his win. He would win at Talladega in 1981, and still to this day it is widely considered the biggest upset in NASCAR history. He was such an afterthought that Darrell Waltrip, who was battling Terry Labonte on the last lap, didn't even block Bouchard's move, thinking he was a lap down. This win by Bouchard would clinch the 1981 Rookie of the Year award for him. It has been over 40 years since the state's last win. Who do you think can change that and bring it back to victory lane? The Great Lakes State is next. Let's talk about Michigan. It has 40 total wins between four drivers. The state has one championship, but no Hall of Famers currently. Brad Keselowski of Rochester Hills leads the state in every single category with 35 wins and the state's only championship coming in 2012. And Keselowski embodies Michigan being a team owner at RFK driving the famous Ford Blue Oval, a staple company of Michigan. Bill Parsons would get the state's first win, winning his only career win in 1988 at Talladega. The Cup Series has a few active drivers from Michigan, including two winners, the previously mentioned Keselowski and three-time winner Eric Jones. With rookie Carson Hosevar hitting the scene in 2024, could he become the state's fifth different winner? And man, there are a lot of states beginning with M to win in the Cup Series. This time it's the Magnolia State, Mississippi. They have four total wins between two drivers. They don't currently have a championship or a Hall of Famer. The state is led by Olive Branch native Ricky Stenhouse Jr. The three-time Cup Series winner would get the biggest win of his career in 2023, winning the Daytona 500. Stenhouse is a super speedway specialist with all three of his wins coming on NASCAR's biggest tracks. The state would become a winner with Lake Speed's win at Darlington in 1988. With JTG showing promise after 2023, could Stenhouse add on to Mississippi's win total? And time for a pretty surprising one, but man does Missouri have some surprising stats. The Show Me State showed up and has 98 total wins between five different drivers. They also have a championship and a Hall of Famer as well. A large part of the state's success is thanks to the Arnold Missouri-born Rusty Wallace. He would win 55 times in his Hall of Fame career, as well as winning the 1989 Series Championship. Anyone who watched NASCAR in the 90s knows just how dominant Rusty was, making Missouri proud. The last win for the state belongs to Carl Edwards. 
Born in Columbia, Missouri, Edwards was a dominant force in the late 2000s and early 2010s. His win at Texas in 2016 is the last for the state. Edwards came so close to winning a championship on so many different occasions. He literally tied for the title in 2011, and 2016 was all but his, however we know how that ended. His departure from the sport was a tough one for a lot of fans, myself included. Another Missouri-born driver to win some big races was Jamie McMurray. He would win the Daytona 500 and Brickyard 400 in 2010. Jamie Mack would win a total of seven times for the state. Missouri was a pleasant surprise with its success. Who can add on to that success? And we wrap up the M states with Montana. A lot of you guessed Montana as a winless state when I posed the question before the video's release, but it escaped the status of winless if only barely. The Treasure State has one win, no championships, and no Hall of Famers. The state's lone win belongs to Chuck Stevenson. This is a pretty wild win too. Chuck would only make two NASCAR starts, winning in his second start at Willow Springs in 1956. So a driver who only made two starts ever is the only winner for Big Sky Country. Still, a pretty cool stat. Great job, Chuck. We've made our way out of the M states and on to Nebraska. The Cornhusker State also only has one win, no championships, and no Hall of Famers. Nebraska's lone winner is Omaha's Bob Burdick. He would grab his lone career win at Atlanta in 1961. Burdick would only make 15 total starts in the Cup Series, making the most of his time in the sport. Well, that was quick. I wish I had more to say, but let's move on. We are only just past halfway. We now get to a state that has been dominated by a pair of brothers. It's the Silver State, Nevada. It has 97 wins between two drivers. It also has three championships shared between those two drivers and no Hall of Famers currently. Yeah, this is the Bush Brothers' home state. Kyle and Kurt Busch, Las Vegas natives, are the deadliest brother duo in the sport's history. Kyle leads the duo with 63 total wins and two championships coming in 2015 and 2019. His brother Kurt has 34 wins and one title coming in 2004. Kyle made the jump to RCR after a 15-year marriage with Joe Gibbs Racing and he picked up three wins in his first season back with Chevy. There is no doubt that both of these brothers will be Hall of Famers. The only question now is how many more wins will Kyle add to the state's total? We head back to the Northeast to touch on the Garden State, New Jersey. It has 37 total wins between four drivers. It has one championship and no current Hall of Famers. Yeah, this state is basically dominated by one driver, Martin Truex Jr. The Mayetta native has 34 of the state's 37 wins, leaving the other drivers with one win apiece. Truex is also the state's only champion, winning the title in 2017. Another legendary name came from the Garden State, Mark Donahue. He would get Team Penske their first win as a cup team and would also win the Indy 500 in 1972. Nobody really knows how much longer Truex has in the Cup Series. He has stated that he will only sign one-year deals from now on, so we will have the same discussion every year until he announces retirement. We move right across the border to New York for the next one. The Empire State has 34 wins split among 11 drivers. The state has one championship and no current Hall of Famers. Jeff Bodine leads the way with 18 total wins at the Cup level. His crowning achievement has to be saving Hendrick Motorsports by winning at Martinsville in 1984. As a matter of fact, he is the only driver with double-digit wins from the state. And here's a unique one. The state's only championship belongs to Bill Rexford. Bill only has one win in the Cup Series, but that win was good enough to earn him the 1950 Series Championship. And let me clear the air, the state of New York actually has 35 wins, even if the official record books don't show that. Regan Smith is on the winners list, but only for one win. We all know that he won the 2008 Amp Energy 500, but NASCAR decided to pull the greatest robbery in the sport's history. Jared at the Iceberg has a great video on this, be sure to check it out after this one if you aren't familiar. Regan is the most recent winner from the state, however, with his win in the 2011 Southern 500. Another notable driver from the Empire State is Dan Gurney. He was a winner in Formula One, IndyCar, and NASCAR. He earned five total wins at the cup level, good for second most from the state. All right, we have hit the obvious winners. The true kings of NASCAR come from the Tar Heel State, North Carolina. I mean, come on. 
This is the center of NASCAR, with basically every single cup team being based somewhere around Charlotte, North Carolina. No other state is even close, just look at these numbers. North Carolina has 737 total wins earned by 28 different drivers. The state is home to nine different champions, earning a total of 25 championships, and it has had 11 drivers inducted into the Hall of Fame. We will definitely spend the most time on this one, but I will try to keep it somewhat concise. After all, this is mostly to show the state-by-state -state breakdown. The King, Richard Petty of Level Cross, North Carolina, leads all drivers in the sports history with 200 wins. He is also tied with the most championships with seven. He also has seven Daytona 500 trophies, which is just insane. He certainly earned his nickname of the King. His father, Lee Petty, was also a prominent driver in the sports history, winning 54 times and earning three championships. The Tar Heel State is also home to the Intimidator, Dale Earnhardt. The Kannapolis-born legend would win 76 times and would tie Richard Petty with seven championships. His son, Dale Earnhardt Jr., would add another 26 wins for the state, and he was NASCAR's most popular driver from 2002 until his retirement in 2017. Junior has been so good for the state, being a major part of bringing back one of NASCAR's most historic tracks, North Wilkesboro, to the sport. And I mean, just listen to this list of Hall of Famers from the state. Richard Petty, Dale Earnhardt, Lee Petty, Ned Jarrett, Junior Johnson, Herb Thomas, Bobby Isaac, Dale Jarrett, Rex White, Dale Jr., and Benny Parsons. That is an elite list of drivers all in one state. With plenty of active drivers from the state, North Carolina is in no danger of losing its status as the best state for producing drivers. All right, we got the big one out of the way, only 10 more after this one, and it is home to our current NASCAR champion, this is Ohio. The Buckeye State has 25 wins between four drivers. It has one championship and no current Hall of Famers. So at the time of this recording, the state is led in wins by Hollywood Tim Richmond. He would grab 13 wins in his time in the Cup Series, although that time was cut short due to illness. A fan favorite for sure, he made the state of Ohio so much cooler just by being from there. And as I previously mentioned, the current champion also hails from the Buckeye State. Ryan Blaney has won 10 times and is the state's only champion, winning the 2023 Cup Series title. I honestly had no clue Blaney was born in Ohio, but hey, that's got to be some bragging rights for the Ohio NASCAR fans. With Blaney still being in the prime of his career, I see Richmond's reign on top coming to an end very soon, perhaps even next year. Oddly enough, Blaney's teammate at Penske, Austin Sendrick, is also from the state. He is the only Ohio-born driver to win the Daytona 500, so that's pretty cool. Hopefully Cendric can bounce back from a dismal 2023 effort. Maybe he and Blaney can show out for the Buckeye State next year. 10 more to go. Man, this one has been a project. Let's get to the Sooner State, Oklahoma. This one will be quick, as the state has 6 wins by 1 driver, and it is the most recent state to add their name to the winner's list. Christopher Bell is the only Oklahoma-born driver to win at the cup level, with the state getting its first win in 2021 at the Daytona Road Course. Bell has emerged as debatedly the top dog at Joe Gibbs Racing. He has six wins so far, but three of those wins came in extremely clutch fashion. In 2022, he would put together two walk-off wins in the playoffs to make the championship four. He would then do the same in 2023, winning at Homestead in the round of eight to punch his ticket. While he hasn't had the greatest luck in the winner-take-all finale at Phoenix, making the big show two years in a row is impressive. With Bell still being very young, the Sooner State is in great shape for the foreseeable future. To the Pacific Northwest we go, stopping in the Beaver State. Oregon has eight total wins between five different winners. No championships, but it is home to one Hall of Famer. The state is led in wins by their lone Hall of Famer, Bridal Veil Oregon's Herschel McGriff. He would win four times at the cup level, all coming in 1954. Herschel had an extremely long racing career, making starts from 1950 until 1993. He would also dominate in what was the Winston West series, winning the series title in 1986. Bill Amick, Royce Haggerty, John Kuyper, and Art Watts are all tied with one win apiece for the state. I have a lot of respect for the Pacific Northwest racing scene. There are a lot of hot shoes out that way, and they know how to have some fun. 
Going back to the East Coast, we talk about the Keystone State, Pennsylvania. It has seven wins between three different drivers. They are still waiting for their first championship and their first Hall of Famer. The state is led in wins by Dick Linder. The Pittsburgh native would win three times at NASCAR's elite level, being the state's first winner as well. John Andretti and Jimmy Spencer are tied with two wins each as the state's other winners. It is somewhat surprising that Pennsylvania hasn't seen more success. Who can be the next Keystone State driver to win? So we know that North Carolina has dominated NASCAR history, but their neighbors to the south have had their fair share of success. The Palmetto State ranks third in terms of wins with an impressive 266. Those wins are split between eight different drivers, three champions call the state home, winning eight titles, and five of their drivers have been inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame. They are led in wins by the Silver Fox, David Pearson. The Spartanburg native is second all-time on the wins list with 105, also winning three titles in 1966, 68, and 69. He would be inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame in 2011. Some other historic names call the state home, with Kel Yarbrough and Buck Baker being the other champions from the state. They contributed 83 and 46 wins respectively. Their other Hall of Famers would be Buck's son Buddy and Hall of Fame car owner Cotton Owens. Cotton would be the owner for David Pearson's 1966 championship, a true South Carolina team. The state hasn't seen Victory Lane in a long time, however, with the state's last win coming in 1985 at Charlotte with Kel Yarbrough. The Palmetto State lives in its northern neighbor's shadow, but they definitely caused their drivers trouble for quite a while. We are getting close to the end. Staying in the southeast, we visit the Volunteer State. Tennessee has 16 wins between four drivers. Surprisingly, it has no championships, but it has one Hall of Famer. It is led in wins by Sterling Marlin with 10. The Columbia native would also win back-to-back -back Daytona 500s in 1994 and 1995. Sterling wouldn't be the only Daytona 500 winner to hail from the Volunteer State. Trevor Bain would shock the sport and win the 2011 running of the Great American Race with the Wood Brothers. He is also the most recent winner from the state as well. Tennessee's only Hall of Famer would be a member of the fabled Alabama gang, Nashville's Red Farmer. While Red never won a Cup Series race, he was a decorated modified driver and would be inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2022. He was also the late Davey Allison's crew chief in the Xfinity Series, and he was actually in the plane that crashed, ultimately taking the life of Davey. With Josh Berry entering the Cup Series next year driving for Stuart Haas, can the Hendersonville native add his name to the list of winners from the Volunteer State? Let me know down below. Five more to go, and we head to the Lone Star State. Texas has 65 wins with eight different drivers. They have three championships between two drivers, and those two drivers are the two Hall of Famers from the state. The Lone Star State is led in wins by none other than Texas Terry Labonte. He barely edged out his brother for most wins with 22 total wins. Terry also brought home two championships for the state in 1984 and 1996. He would be inducted into the NASCAR Hall of Fame in 2016. His brother Bobby is second in total wins with 21. Bobby would follow in his brother's footsteps, winning his lone championship in 2000. Legendary driver AJ Foyt is also from the Lone Star State, and he is currently on the Hall of Fame ballot. Foyt, a seven-time cup winner, is also a decorated IndyCar champion. Not only has he won the Indy 500 four times, but he would also win the Daytona 500 in 1972. In my opinion, the Houston native should definitely be a Hall of Famer. Hopefully he gets inducted soon. The state is currently represented in the sport by one active winner, the pride of Prosper, Texas, Chris Buescher. A five-time winner, Buescher showed out in 2023, winning three times and making the round of eight. With the continued rise of RFK, look for Busher to continue adding wins for the Lone Star State. Four to go. We head back to the East Coast. Here is Virginia. The Old Dominion has 106 wins between 12 drivers. They have three championships from two drivers and four Hall of Famers. The state has four drivers with over 15 wins each, and they are led by Joe Weatherly. The Norfolk native has 25 wins and also brought two titles to the state, winning back-to-back -back in 1962 and 63. The other champion from Virginia is a special one, 
Red Byron would be NASCAR's first champion, winning the 1949 Cup Series title. He only won two times in his career, but that was good enough for him to win the title. He only ever made 15 starts, so he certainly did it all in a short time. Some other legendary drivers hail from Virginia. Hall of Famers Curtis Turner and Glenn Wood are the other two from the state. Both Wood and Turner are connected in more ways than just being from Virginia. Glenn Wood is a legendary team owner, being the co-founder of Wood Brothers Racing. He would draw inspiration from Turner, and in return, Curtis would win his final Cup Series win with the Wood Brothers. The Burton brothers are also from Virginia, with Ward even adding a Daytona 500 trophy for the state. There isn't an active winner from Virginia, with Jeff Burton's win in 2008 being the last for the state. Who can change that? Alright, the final three. Let's get back to the Northwest with Washington State. The Evergreen State has 37 wins among two drivers. They have no championships or current Hall of Famers. Both of their winners are recent drivers, with Greg Biffle having a one-win advantage over fellow driver Casey Kane with 19 wins. Both Biffle and Kane found significant success in their time, with Biffle coming oh so close to a title in 2005, finishing second. I had a great deal of respect for both of these drivers, and I hate not seeing them on Sunday. The penultimate state is here, and it will be a quick one. Here is West Virginia. The Mountain State has 12 wins between three drivers. It doesn't have a championship or a current Hall of Famer. West Virginia is led in wins by Paul Goldsmith of Parkersburg. He would win nine times in 127 Cup Series starts. Goldsmith was also a very successful USAC stock car driver, winning two championships there. The other winners from the state are Billy Myers with two wins and Larry Frank with one. Another state with a very long winless streak. And unless I'm missing someone, I don't think we have a single driver in NASCAR at the moment that can change that. And we have hit the end, the 35th and final state to win a Cup Series race, and there are some significant names for this one. It is the Cheese State, Wisconsin. They have 68 total wins between six different drivers. They also have two championships by two drivers, as well as two Hall of Famers. This one will make quite a few folks happy. Wisconsin is led in wins by Matt Kenseth. The Cambridge native would win 39 times in his Hall of Fame career, as well as winning the 2003 Cup Series title. Kenseth is also a two-time Daytona 500 winner, showing he was capable of shining on the biggest stage. The state's other champion is another big name, Greenfield's Alan Colwicky. Alan would win five times in his career, and would win probably the most exciting NASCAR finale ever in 1992. I highly suggest everyone to watch the 1992 Hooters 500 if you haven't already. It is one of the greatest races ever. Other notables from the state include Marvin Panch with 17 wins, Dave Marcus with 5, Paul Menard with 1, and Norm Nelson with 1. It's crazy to think that the state's last win belongs to Kenseth with his win in 2017. Who will break the drought and add their name to the win list? And that'll do it for the United States of NASCAR. If you made it to this part of the video, thanks a ton for sticking around. I know it was a long video, but I didn't want to just do a bar graph short. However, that will be coming, so don't worry. It was a lot of fun to do this research and organize it all. As always, I'm prone to forgetting drivers. Let me know any drivers for any of the states that I missed here. I know I didn't miss any winners, but let me know some notable guys who could get a win for their state. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps a ton and I definitely appreciate it. And did you know that 77% of my viewers aren't subscribed, but they are returning viewers? If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? Thanks a ton to Darcy for the incredible graphic work for this one. I know it took a lot of time for you and they looked great and it saved a ton of time. His Twitter is linked below. Be sure to follow him there. And as always, thanks to the Dogleg team for all of your hard work. Dice, Darkseid, Nino, Chili, Elite, and The Gamer, y'all are incredible. We have a Discord server that is growing every single day with over 180 members. Find the invite in the About section of the channel or in the description below to join the garage for even more fun and learning. But that'll do it for us here at Dogleg Media. I'm Matt, your host, and you've been watching the United States of NASCAR. I'll see you next time.